Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part three of our Lysander builds. Builds plural because we are still building two. So um, in the last video we pretty much got ourselves to this point here, give or take a part. Um, and really w our next step here is to assemble that. Um, but before I do that um, we need to prime those parts. Um, which leads me into wanting to get as many other things built up ahead of priming as possible so that we're basically priming, painting and, and final assembly. So um, next step is actually going to be um, looking at some of these um, engine parts, I think. Okay, so um, I've taken this part off um, because we've not accounted for it for this assembly here, the other parts are pretty much done. So that needs cleaning up um, and it needs um, priming separately. So our next bit is this and we have taken these parts off here. Um, and my thought process is the pipework we will prime um, as separate components. Um, I might glue this part here to the photo etch um, on the uh, one model that's getting the photo etch um, added um, which will be the SOE one then these individuals um, I've got two different ways of going with that I can either paint them all on um, prime them all on the, on the sprue um, or I can take them all off and put them onto individual cocktail sticks um, the correct way obviously would be to paint them individually um, and clean up the top here um, but there's part of me saying that once that goes inside there you're never going to see the top so does it really matter so um, it's just really um, creating more work for the for the sakes of it so I think we're gonna at least we're gonna prime them on there whether I end up taking them off and painting them separately I don't know but I'm rather thinking leave them on there so that's that job done um, the engine the main engine core if you like the hub um, that needs quite a lot of clean up can you see it's got um, fairly decent mold line running right through all the parts that you you're going to be adding on so each one of these needs flattening off um, and the seam in between needs um, sorting out so that'll have to come off um, as well um, and then we can mount it through the middle on a on a cocktail stick and paint those individually so um, that's sort of my next step. We've already assembled those. I need to check whether we put the photo etch on, um, if not. So I'm gonna clean that up and then we'll come to the photo etch bits. These parts have all been cleaned up now. What I did discover in the process was that when it comes to the uh, engine block, if you like, um, we don't need to clean up the tops as I thought. We only need to get the rid of the seam in between. So these, um, sit flat on the surface, they actually sit over the top of the lumps so as long as they sit flat that's all you need to clean up so that saves some some time. I did manage to do one fully before I realised that. So those parts are done and I want to see if we can glue that part onto there so we can because um, it's all the same colour when it gets painted so we can prime that in one so we need to uh, get the photo etch parts out next. So whilst we're going to remove the photo etch parts for the engine I want to take this part off as well and form that ready for priming as well. So that's this part here. So I'm going to remove that first and then we can bend that into shape. Okay, don't need to clean that up, so that's good. So, it seems to be a frame that folds backwards. And we've got um, a fast bend joint there. OK. 
Okay. And then these two side bits fold down. Um, so there is detail on both sides, um, but on one side you've got this little panel lines. You don't have them on the other side. So the panel lines need to face out. So that's bending behind it. Two little tabs here bend forward and then these bend underneath. So let's do that very quickly. So it's always important to think about how you're going to um, bend this, what your process is. So they, those two sides bend down, which will be up while it's flat. So we'll do those first. one done. Now it gets harder to get in now because we've got because it's a triangular shape we've got quite a narrow edge so just want to see if uh, nope that's too thick and I can't bend it that way right we'll need to hold them uh, we might be able to do it with the pliers Let's see if we can do it with the pliers Pliers will do it. Okay. And then that was nice and easy. Okay. So they will need a little bit of um, forming before they go on, but we'll do look at those last. So Let's get these parts glued together. So I'm going to use some medium CA for this. Okay, so I've aligned the two parts and I've put them um, in this peg just to clamp them together. So where the two parts meet, up, meet at one of these tips, we're just clamping that together. That means that I can separate these to put some glue in. Um, so that's what we will do. Okay, that should be okay. Right, let's have a look at the um, engine covers. I'm putting these on. So they're in here. I have quite a few parts in here, so I have to be careful. Okay, so I've identified where the uh, photo etch parts need to go. Now, the photo etch is relatively thick as photo etch goes and although I can roll this and form it into a shape um, so that I can glue it down on here, there's always the risk that over time it'll spring and, 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 and pop part way off. So to get rid of that springiness I want to just um, quickly anneal the two parts. Um, and As I've got my tea light on it's an opportunity to get the super glue off the end of my glue applicator. So we'll, We've done that. Um, if I'd thought about it, I could have done this while it was still attached to its fret, but I didn't, so uh, so I didn't. So we're just going to hold it over there till we can see it change colour. So that's that first one done. There we go, that's that job done. So we've taken all the spring out of the metal now. Nice and easy. So we want to um, just form it so it goes over there. Um, so I'll just get my rolling set out. Thinking that one. So all I'm going to do is place it in the um, groove here and press that down and that will form an initial shape. 
and let's see how that's done. Yes, that's ever so slightly over bent, so that's perfect. Means I can put the glue in, press it down and hold it down, and it'll be perfectly flat. So Okay, so I've drawn on with a pencil the location point, so I don't have to recheck my references. I just have to make sure it's all square. Okay, happy with that. So my build now continues with more work on the engine cowling. So we've got this air scoop that needs to go on the, the bottom. And it's suggesting that we need to cut a little hole out. Then we've got this photo etch part to add on to the top here. And the exhausts. Now, I want to attach the exhaust before we prime it. So if there's any gaps or seams, we can fill that. Um, that's quite a delicate part, but um, we should be all right to put that on as well. So that's my square marked out. So I think my approach is to drill initially some holes in the corners and then we can um, cut it away with a knife. So I'm not going to cut right up to the line, I'm going to cut inside the line and make the box smaller than it's suggested and then we can widen it at our leisure. What I can't do if I make the box too big is make it any smaller. Okay, we need a sharp knife. And I'm just rocking the blade backwards and forwards and what that does is it slowly edges it forwards. Um, and you've got better control and you're less likely to slip and have an accident. Because you're using less force basically. Okay, that seems to be connected. Just going to go from this side as well and make sure that that connection is all the way through. Yeah, I think it is now. So we have a hole now, as the instructions have requested. Now we've got that out, I can just go in with a knife and trim that back a little bit and tidy it up a little bit. And it'd probably be quicker to go in with a file and take that back now. So I'm using a diamond cut mini file. This is a triangular one. We'll head towards those corners. Okay, so we've opened that up a little bit now and we're nearly there. So I'm just changing to um, a flat file um, just because it makes um, it's just that bit wider and I can I can flatten the surface using the smaller file um, I find these great for roughing out but because they're so small and they've not got much width um, you can't get um, an even line um, on a bigger surface so um, as soon as you can get in with a bigger file it's better to do that if you can. Right, we're not looking too shabby now. Let's just have another go at that.
So there we go, we have a hole ready for our photo etch. So I'm happy with that. Um, what we will do, I've just got one corner I need to just um, straighten out ever so slightly the forward edge of that corner and then we'll just rinse the dust off the part and we're, we're good. Right, let's get this first photo etch part on and we can have a look at building up the structure. So easier with, the, with these thin parts here to uh, put the glue onto the photo etch, I think. Okay, that has gone on okay. So I'm happy with that. So the part that goes on top, um, we've got to build up from these two bits here. So let's have a look at that. Way, keep my space tidy and keep it safe. So we're after part 56 first. So there's the two side bits 56. It'll look a bit more rectangular, won't it? Now, right, there we go. Okay, so we've got two edges there to fold up um, and that to curl to conform to those sides. So just want to check. Yeah, I thought I had a little nub. Yeah, that one's all right. Um, okay, I'm going to go and anneal that part first and then I'll come back to you and we'll roll it. Right, my parts are kneeled. Um, I just need to decide on a curve. Yeah, I'm going to go with that, that one, I think. So we'll take all of these out. And we'll start... by just putting an initial bend in it using this side of the rolling tool. Okay, so we can see, let's put a little bend in it initially. We flip the tool over so we've got the rubber mat. Okay, so I've got a curve on that. Um, what I want to do next is just bring up the one of the sides so we've got a guide to the curve.
So what I've got is one of the um, ends has been folded up, which is a, then a guide for that um, radius. And I have a fold line that's running the length of this now here. And I'm just going to push that round and see how we've got on. So I'm slightly over curved. The radius is a bit tight on the bottom end, so we just need to bring that out a little bit. And because we've got no spring in this, that's a really easy job. Um, so it's really helpful that we uh, heat this part up. So I have a little gap. I guess we'll have to solder it. Okay, so my soldering iron is going to find it too difficult to get right up into the corner here so I'm going to solder from the outside um, which will um, allow me to um, get some solder in there and then clean it up um, from the outside and hopefully that will look okay so I am just going to put some flux on I prefer the um, watery acid type flux Unless I need to hold parts together, which the other flux can do quite well, um, I tend to use the liquid one myself. So a tiny, tiny slither of solder. That has gone into the gap, which is what we wanted. So if I uh, use my clamp, now you can see we've put a little soldered seam on that, um, which should hold it in place, and we just need to clean it all up. So I'm just sanding this back using an ordinary sanding stick. You don't need anything special for cleaning up solder. Um, I don't tend to use files because uh, the tin in it's soft, so you over time you can um, clog up the teeth on your file if you're not careful. So I've completed the engine cowls now. So if we have a look at the, this is the basic uh, kit one. Um, we've managed to put an extra bit of photo etch on it, and we had two of the exhausts. So I'll just show you. These are the quick boost resin exhausts, and I'll show you how that compares to the plastic exhaust. So the plastic exhaust is not bad. Um, this has a bit of a better profile shape and a thinner wall, and obviously um, it's hollowed out more deeply. Um, but other than that, the kit part's not so bad. Um, cylinder paint, that would look all right. You could probably rifle that out a little bit more if you wished, um, but that's a nice, quick and cheap solution. So that's the basic kit cowl um, done. Um, and then the one that has the more complete photo etch, which will be the SOE version. Um, in addition to the exhaust, we've got um, the little joining straps um, in etch. We've got this. Um, photo etch on the front of the cowl there um, and we've got the air scoop now in place which looks good so I'm quite happy with that um, there's a little bit of filling to be done around the resin there neither the resin nor the kit part fit particularly well um, so just a little bit of, of fill and clean up on there, tiny tiny amount, it's not going to 
it's not going to bother the front wetch that we've put on in any way. Got to be the same on, on both of those. So for now, um, that's that done. I'll save the filling just in case I've got any more filling to do um, as we progress through this. So um, my next step, um, we're not assembling this because we need to paint it. So with a mine to priming, my next step is this. So we can build up this, um, the, the centre there with the with the props on um, and have that as one piece and leave the spinner as a, a two-part spinner, assemble that and leave that as a separate piece uh, for painting. So um, that, I think we'll do that as two pieces. So that's the next the next part of the build. So we will need these bits. So one of the pleasing things of this kit is that the uh, um, propellers um, are separately moulded. So clean up on these parts should be uh, minimal, which should be good. So I'm just cutting out the connecting point and then we'll go in and sand that to shape. I just want to, before we glue the two parts together, just want to have a look at the clearance in there for the propeller. Yeah, so we can see that the propeller, um, when it goes in, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, there's a gap. So we don't even have to bother cleaning up the ends of that, so that's good. So we've just got a seam to take off on there, which we'll do in a sec. Okay, that's looking all right. So we'll glue the two halves together. Um, before we put the props in, because... Um, once we get the props and we need to set them at an angle. Right, that's, those aren't joining together, so I want to make just sure that they're nice and flat. I can't take too much off because it's going to make the hole too small for the props if we're not careful, but that looks good. It's a little fiddly. Make sure that every hole looks nice and round and aligned. Okay, that's one done. So we just need to take the seams off the um, actual blades. So I'm using my uh, seam removing tool. Obviously you could just use the blade of a knife. I'm running up. So the seam doesn't appear to be visible and then just follow the line around and then with this spongy abrasive we'll just go over that and make sure that we've got things nicely rounded off and blended in and looking smooth and all that stuff you, know, you might not be able to see it on camera but on the very tip there is a little indentation line which is where we need to have the uh, yellow tips so that's quite nice um, although not very authentic okay so I'll clean the other three up in a sec let's have a look at um, setting these in so 
does show you a little picture here in the instructions um, that you know you've got to have them at that angle it doesn't actually give you the angle first thing I want to do is check that it fits yeah okay so That look right. Not the easiest thing to work out, really. I think we need to be a bit hands free for this, so let's do that. Okay, so I can get that blade angle correct as I look at it. It's the first one in. Fortunately, the uh, fit is relatively tight, so uh, it will hold its position once you've placed it where you need it to be, so that's nice. So this last one doesn't want to go in, so we'll just sand a bit off. It was the last one, isn't it? You'd like to think that the first one's the hardest, and then it gets easier with practice, but it's always the, strangely, it's always the last one that plays up. Yep, still don't want to go in. How annoying. Of course, once I've sorted this out, it'll be too loose. There we go. And not too loose as it turns out. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So I'm happy with that. We'll uh, let that dry. Right, with the propellers done and drying, we can get the spinner done next. Um, so we need two of them, where's the other ones? There we go. And I can't find the spinner, I think that broke off if I remember in, in the first hit. So let's just, I'm going to have to trawl through my parts. Um, let's make one up. And you can see that done, and then I'll do that separately. So just nip in the connecting board um, tab off uh, the spinner, and then the spinner base the same. Just cut it a little way off so that um, I can then sand it down to where I need it. Just 
want to make sure I don't put a flat on this and change the shape of it. That looks okay. So just test fit the parts. There we go together beautifully. Go. that's the spinner made up I'm just going to let that dry and then we'll sand that back edge just to make sure it's all nice and smooth and there's no gaps or anything and it looks like one so I need to find that other spinner okay that's the spinners done um, and we now have quite a collection of um, parts this is the SOE version, this is the Finnish Air Force version. Um, so quite a bit of parts that we can prime. Um, there is an additional bit of resin to go in, which will go into this engine. Um, it will be omitted from the Finnish version. Um, so that completes that step. So um, next is assembly of the machine gun and the finished version um, which is F has this single variant here so we'll build up that next um, and then that's ready for priming also um, and then we're pretty much we have to source our own bit of tube for this part here. So we've got a resin part, a little bit of one millimeter plastic rod, um, and then, which needs to be 56 millimeters long. Um, so that's easy to do. And then we have um, a little curly thing that comes out of the back there. Um, so then those go together. So we're pretty much ready for priming um, we've got to clean up the the uh, two fuselage halves because we haven't done that yet and then there is some photo etched surface detail to go on for the SOE version um, we're not using those bombs because they are not relevant to either of our builds um, we have to see whether that if that's over the seam line we can't put that on so we put the two fuselage together. Um, those can be cleaned up for priming. We can assemble the um, rear ski. Not doing the bombs, so that's all good. And then we'll have to do the wheels for the SOE version. Um, I want to prime the wheels separately, so we'll prime those parts separately um, and then assemble them ahead of paint because um, we're going to have to paint and then mask, I think, the wheels. Probably the way to go. We can build that up. Um, we've already built that up, so we are pretty much there in terms of getting ready for priming, I think. Okay, so I have now cleaned up all the parts for both kits and they've been separated into their um, relevant piles or in this case side of my uh, storage box where I keep um, the model while it's being built. Um, so we've got the two different paint instructions laid out um, and underneath is the different models ready to be primed. So we've got the SOE version here which is uh, going to be black all over and then we've got the Finnish Air Force which has this nice little um, white and blue with yellow wing tips it's a, it's a very nice little um, paint scheme I think so you can see when we take these off and we actually look at the model for a sec you can see the differences actually the, the Finnish one we've got these um, resin skis to paint up um, 
but otherwise they're fundamentally the same. We've got some bombs, so we've actually got some extra parts for the finished one that we've not got on the SOE. SOE's got a drop tank, and, and the finished one's got bombs, basically. So there we have it, all the parts ready for priming. So my next job is to get some grey primer down on the SOE one, and I think we're gonna put some white primer um, on the finished one. 